So today we finally got third party reviews for the Intel A770 and A750, which, well, just one week ago, much of the tech press was instantly swallowing some pretty bold claims from Intel that they were bringing back the mid range and offering unprecedented price performance. And, well, this, this is what Intel's claims turned into in reality. An unstable card that costs about the same as an RTX 3060, which is one of the worst price performance cards in history, never really being sold for its MSRP, and all it ever does is manage to yo-yo in performance between a 6600 and 6650 XT, while consuming almost as much energy as a 6800, and, well, again, costing more than a 6600 and even 6650 XT. And, well, I actually don't want to dwell on the overall performance here too much because, look, I don't think there's much to say. Alchemist's performance is really bad. It's as bad as I expected. But I do want to nail something early in this video, and that's, it's not just that its performance is bad. Its price performance is really, really bad. Now, if we go to the hardware unbox, they did a really good job of highlighting how bad the price performance is. But I have to stress that, if anything, Steve was kind to this graphics card. The 6650XT really is commonly found for $300 or less. As of recording this video, I found one for $285 in the United States. And so it really doesn't matter if you're comparing Alchemist to a 6600, a 6650XT, or even in a 3060, the thing is just bad price performance and offers you issues. You see, I actually have an Alchemist card here right now, and I might have a couple more on the way, so I'm not going to dwell on exact performance numbers yet, as this isn't my review video for that. But what I can say is, I did wait until review day to install the latest drivers, making sure I didn't try to use an Alchemist card before the drivers were supposedly ready so that I didn't taint my overall opinion by a horrible experience that maybe would get better on launch day. But using launch drivers, well, all I tried to do today is test my most played games on PC right now. I booted up Deep Rock Galactic and it did work fine. And then I booted up Age of Empires 4 and it worked okay eventually despite odd resolution issues at the start and some loading issues. But overall, I would check the boxes. It was fine. And then in Bannerlord, well, in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, I had weird graphical issues in the trees in the overworld. In Battlefield 2042, well, it didn't even launch. I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get it to load maps, guys. And I was using an Alder Lake system fully up to date with Windows 11. So those issues, those issues don't apply to a 3060 or a 6650 XT that you can get for better price performance. And to drive my point home, I actually want to bring up the RTX 4090. You see, NVIDIA just released pretty impressive numbers, regardless of what you think about the price, for the type of performance you will get out of a 4090, which, if we just look at where that 3060 is, and look, these are NVIDIA's numbers, and we need to wait for third-party reviews to be sure, but I'm just trying to make a point here. Bear with me. If we just assume the A770 is around a 3060 in performance and take these numbers here and then multiply it out, honestly, guys... The 4090 is arguably just 10% worse price performance than the A770. Some supposed budget hero bringing back the mid-range. And of course, that's before we even talk about the benefits you would get in ray tracing performance per dollar and DLSS and other features. And of course, just the overall better stability of a 4090 over an A770. Uh, don't get me wrong now. I'm not not trying to say the 4090 is good value. I am not trying to defend the 4090 or say it's some great thing. And and I understand that these are some looser numbers. This isn't a third-party review showing exact performance differences between the 4090 and the A770. But the fact of the matter is, the Lovelace announced graphics cards have been maligned by the PC gaming community as tone-deaf and horrible price performance and NVIDIA not reading the room and yet it, it doesn't seem that much worse price performance than Alchemist. At a minimum, what that should tell you is that Alchemist is no budget hero. It is not saving the mid-range. It is probably fairly comparable to Lovelace price performance, which it seems like we all agreed was terrible. So if you agree, then you should agree that Alchemist, at best, is only slightly 
better price performance and it is not worth buying because you're getting good bang for your buck. Unless you think the 4090 is great value. But okay then, I've covered that the performance is terrible and unreliable and that the price to performance is also just as bad. Maybe one of the worst price to performance lineups I've seen in my lifetime. If you buy Alchemist though, might it improve? Are there signs in the reviews that we're seeing out there right now that it could age like fine wine and that, well, buying an A770 is really an investment in the future, not just in the future for improving performance for yourself, hopefully, but that you're supporting a third entrant that will benefit the health of the PC gaming community. Is there a good argument to be made about that? I want to talk about those things, and I've actually got early launch volume information for Alchemist as well, but first, an ad from a sponsor. Although this fall has been insanely busy for most members of the Moore's Law is Dead team, there's one team member who's been allowed to take it quite easy recently. And, well, unless you're Reesey, unless you're just a dog chilling on a fall afternoon, you could probably benefit from as little wasted time as possible. And you should probably then try Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a delicious American-crafted source of protein and nutrients that takes minutes to make without sacrificing taste. This includes their classic packages that make it easy to add protein and other ingredients of your choice while cooking, and their new Ramen Go packages that offer a healthy microwavable option for those who truly only have a 15-minute lunch break. Whether you're back in the office now or still just working from home, Vite Ramen, you'll never be too busy to eat. And if you click the link in the description and use the offer code broken silicon you can save 10 percent off a variety of different products including special bundles for moore's law said fans raw nudes if you want to make up your own recipes and the vite go packages as well and other cooking utensils and products whatever you'd prefer using these offer codes really help support moore's law is dead tremendously and it gets you a good deal on a healthy fast to make and tasty reliable sponsor of moore's law is dead try vite ramen today all right then, so today I've seen a lot of people openly say that the performance and the price performance is bad for the A770, but that if you buy it, well, it might age like fine wine. How do we know if that's at all likely to be true? Well, I would argue the first thing we should just do is look at 4K performance. After all, Raja Kadori's openly said that they're having trouble utilizing the card fully. And from people I've talked to, and I've covered this on the channel many times, that it, it seems to come down to the hardware scheduler. Whether it is a software issue related to the hardware scheduler or not, it is the hardware scheduler, and it's not fully utilizing all of those shaders. But those shaders will be utilized more than usual if you just saturate them completely with a resolution that you probably wouldn't actually game at. And then, well, if we just look at the 4K performance and assume hopefully eventually this is where we would see relative 1440p and 1080p performance, I I'm not really seeing what's worth getting excited about here. From what I'm seeing, even in 4K, these cards are still usually losing to the 3070 or even the 6700 XT by, well, 20 to 30% most of the time. And sometimes it's like, what, within 10%? Remember, the 6700 XT is $400 right now. So this investment in the future argument is basically saying you should save 40 to $70 versus a 6700 XT now, even though you're going to get worse performance than a $285.6650 XT right now, in the hopes that a year from now, you'll have saved $10, $20 relative to like a $400.6700 XT. Even when ray tracing is taken into account, I'm not seeing the magic of this argument. RDNA 2 doesn't look the worst compared to Alchemist in every game. And then, even if we're not looking at, like, 4K performance, even if we just look at best-case scenarios, I don't know. Again, Spider-Man doesn't impress me that much. It's performing like other two 25-watt cards. And, again, remember, this is, well, Battlefield can't even boot with this graphics card on my system. And then let's bring up Strange Brigade, another best case scenario that supposedly points to future Alchemist performance. I want to focus on Strange Brigade here for a second for a reason. There seems to be this sentiment that what the best case scenarios look like now, like Strange Brigade, is definitely for some reason what every game will age into over time. And I've seen this happen before, and that's not what happened. 
years ago. I reviewed the Radeon 7, and I specifically decided to, in my review, compare it to the 2080 Ti. Not because they were priced similarly, and not because the Radeon 7 on average was as good as the 2080 Ti, but I just thought it was interesting to compare one of AMD's best dies that was slightly cut down to one of NVIDIA's best dies that was also slightly cut down. And, well... Yeah, in Strange Brigade, I found that the Radeon 7, especially if I overclocked it, would beat the 2080 Ti. And I said, maybe that is how this graphics card will age over time. And these results are backed up by Guru3D as well, who also found that Strange Brigade just seemed to love Vega. Did this mean that eventually Vega, because Strange Brigade did well, every other game aged that way? No, that's not what ended up happening, guys. The Radeon 7 remained a 1080 Ti and 2080 competitor, at least in gaming, maybe not in other compute tasks, but at least in gaming, it never aged to be better than a 2080 overall. And actually, it's funny, Strange Brigade is a game where the 3080 beat the 2080 Ti by an above average 50%. You see, guys, Strange Brigade tends to favor certain cards much more than others that is outside of the norm. That doesn't mean I think that Strange Brigade is a bad game to include in an average. I use it in my averages for a reason. You know, that with maybe Metro Exodus to balance each other out. I used to get pretty good averages using less games in my roster than a lot of bigger websites. But the fact of the matter is, even if it's good as part of an average, Strange Brigade is definitely not a game you should point to as an indication of future performance on average because it wasn't before. And to assume it will now is just... Well, it's not based on any fact or reason, it's just hopium. Now, am I saying there's no way that Alchemist will age better than the average AMD or NVIDIA card, relatively speaking, as they improve drivers over time? Of course I'm not saying that, and I think it will to a certain extent. But, it's starting at RTX 4090 price performance. That's not a great place to start from, and whether we look at the 4K analysis, or we look at the best case scenarios, all I'm seeing here is something that at a best case scenario, based on all evidence, which purchasing decisions should be made on evidence, not on hopium, based on all evidence out there, th th there's just no signs that this is ever going to be some 6700 XT killer, and it doesn't cost that much less than a 6700 XT right now. A and so look, d don't get me wrong, if there is a specific rendering or encoding task you can use alchemist for and you're a hundred percent sure it is actually stable at that one task and that's all it's going to be used for and that's why you're buying it well then go get it then if it's good price performance at that but that thing is not gaming because alchemist is horrible price performance at gaming and there's no evidence it will ever justify its current pricing or the headaches you'll be going through for a year at the end of that year remember there's a chance Intel may just drop driver support for this graphics card if it axes ARC, which I maintain that discrete ARC in the high end is effectively canceled, at least for the foreseeable future. That what they're dumping into the market right now is just trying to get rid of a product next to a much more impressive product's launch date and hoping you forget it ever existed. If you buy Alchemist, you're not buying a part of the future. You're putting blind faith into a company that has lied to you about Alchemist and lied to you about Alchemist and continues to this day lying about its price performance, misrepresenting its performance and value. It's still lying to you. If you buy into that, you are not helping a beneficial third entrant into the market. You're rewarding a company that has lied to you and continues to lie to you, and you're making the competition, the duopoly you say is bad for all of us, which I agree, duopolies aren't ideal, you're making the duopoly look good, and that is helping nobody. Well, there is one more thing I want to close on here. Now, look, there's a good chance I'll have more updates about Intel Alchemist launch volume closer to Wednesday to the 12th when it comes out. But right now, I'm already getting some interesting information that suggests if you want to buy an Intel graphics card just for collector's purposes or you do have that one special thing to use it for where it is good value, then you're going to want to make sure you get it as quickly as you can on October 12th. Because, and if I put the quotes on screen, let's look at them here, every supplier and retailer I've talked to so far 
talks about Alchemist like it's not even really launching on the 12th. This, to me, sounds like a graphics card that is basically going to pop up on Newegg and Amazon and maybe Micro Center. I'll, I'll, I'll have more information soon, I believe, on that. But besides that, they don't seem to be supplying it to a lot of other websites and retailers. And those retailers are, well, as the source number one says, being ghosted by their GPU rep at Intel. And other sources are saying that their Intel reps have directly told them that they may never get Alchemist cards, that there are basically zero plans full stop to give them any. And what that tells you is Intel probably isn't continuing to manufacture these things. That in quarter one, they manufactured a bunch of dies, which Steve at Gamers Nexus proved today, by the way. All right. So the actual reading is February of 2022. Put them in storage and what they're releasing right now well there's going to be a token launch on a few websites to make it look like it's real to the do-it-yourself market and then like i've been telling you guys they're going to dump it into oem and save some of them for the raptor lake laptop launch where they can bundle it with raptor lake and hopefully make okay margins because in the do-it-yourself market there's no money to be made so they don't want to sell it there so if you want to get one of these cards I can't promise you there will be bad volume on Amazon and Newegg on day one, but after day one, or at least after month one, I don't know that you'll be able to get these ever again. At least I can't promise you that yet. I'll have more updates, but that's what it's looking like right now, and I wanted to mentally prepare anyone that wants to get a hold of one of these if you really do want one for some reason, because it's just not looking like Intel has enough faith in this product to keep shipping a lot of them. And it's probably because what they're doing on the market right now is actually making reviewers say things like this. Uh, AMD is in a better spot these days than it ever has been, as it's been finally fixing driver issues that were lying dormant for years up until the last re really couple of years. So they're looking pretty good right now that Intel has reminded us all to appreciate AMD is competing on price. You understand what that means? Intel isn't bringing competition to the market. They're making it seem like AMD and NVIDIA should charge more money with how poor this launch is. And I do not see that as a good entry into the market. Someone who wasted TSMC supply in quarter one when we needed it, and then now is making it seem like it would be okay if AMD charged more. That's not competition. That's actually making the duopoly stronger. And, well, to be honest, guys... That is just gonna about do it for this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. I don't like being negative. I don't like, again, it, no channel would have benefited more from a successful Alchemist launch than the person who leaked its specs and performance and pictures first. I was root, go watch my videos from a year ago. I was so excited for Alchemist. But the fact of the matter is I have to report the truth. And the truth is that this is just a dud and that it seems like they don't have a lot else coming for probably at least a year after that. Might they try something again? Maybe. But for now, well, what they're launching is a token launch that you shouldn't touch. And after that, ARC is effectively canceled in the high end for a very long time. So, yeah, you just had to know. Moving forward, I'm much more excited to start talking about NVIDIA stuff as I have pictures and interesting information about a few upcoming launches from NVIDIA that uh, I'm excited to talk about. We'll see if I can get it out before next week after this video, but we're just going to have to wait and see for that. No matter what, though, make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss that upcoming Lovelace content from Moore's Law is Dead. And then, of course, also, if you have the extra money, consider supporting us on patreon you'll get early ad free access to broken silicon we'll probably be releasing it early this week again to leave room for lovelace so if you want to become a patron and submit questions for me and dan to read for the next episode join right now and note that you'll also get access to a die shrink this week as well that's the exclusive podcast only patrons get access to we cannot do this without our patrons but you know what we also can't do this at all if anyone doesn't watch and so just at the end of the day thank you for watching <laughs>